there's a voice that keeps on calling me Down the road, that's where I'll always be Every stop I make, I make a new friend Can't stay for long, just turn around and I'm gone again Maybe tomorrow I'll want to settle down Until tomorrow I'll just keep moving on So if you want to join me for a while Just grab your hat, we'll travel like that's old style Maybe tomorrow I'll want to settle down Until tomorrow I'll just keep moving on chores done, we can spend a couple hours of mine. I feel lucky. <laughs> By jingo, you're right. This might be the day that Jasper McGill or Cuddy hits another load. It was a day just exactly like this in 1936, or now it was it 38. Okay, you run through the crops, I'll knock over the chicken house, we'll starve the old guy out, huh? <laughs> Dang if I don't think you're right, Pard. Uh, the flood was 36, the drought was 38. I, what's that? It's them again. Them blasted marauders again. I'm coming, I'm coming, Pard. that by this time last week you would have convinced this old man um, McGillicuddy to sell us his 10 acres. But instead of the deed to his property, I have here on my desk a memo informing me that a brand new motorcycle, which we were fortunate to recover at all, now needs $1,500 in repair work. All I tried to do, sir... I don't even want to think about what you tried to do. All I know is you failed to do it, and I don't hand out bonuses for failure. <laughs> Give me another shot, Mr. Parsons. You're lucky you still got your job. Out. What happened, Ralph? Did we get the can? No, we didn't. But I'm not giving up on that bonus money so fast, either. Yes, Susan? Laura Bailey to see you, sir. Oh, yes, yes, of course. Send her in. Uh, didn't he even get mad? Oh, he's mad, all right. But one thing about Glenn Parsons, he pays for results. I'll get that old codger off that place if it kills me. Or him. <laughs> As I mentioned in my letter, 
My last offer was a quarter of a million dollars. And frankly, Miss Bailey, the property is worth that kind of money only to me, since it's located right in the middle of my planned development. But I can't understand why Uncle Jasper turned it down. He accused my attorneys of trying to slicker him out of his gold mine. He's still working that mine? Yes, it would appear so. In spite of the fact that the state engineers have stated on the record that there are no mineral deposits of any kind within a thousand miles of that area. But I haven't seen my uncle in almost 20 years. I don't know that he'll listen to anything I say. Well, hopefully. Mr. McGillicuddy is as vulnerable to um, charm and beauty as the rest of us. I'll do what I can. I appreciate that. I have a driver waiting to take you out there. We struck a vein! This is the big one, pard! What's this? Oh. Here they come again. Don't you worry, pard. Me and Bewley will fix them. I'm coming, pard. I'm coming. Sounds like a woman, don't it? I'm coming up there, Uncle Jasper. Don't shoot. What the devil was she talking about? I never shot a woman in my life. Well, come on up here, girlie. Whoever you are, <laughs> nobody gonna shoot you. Not while old Jasper McGillicullen's alive. Look, Uncle Jasper, it's me, your sister Jane's daughter. Where you take me for? Old Janie's been five years dead. I'm her daughter. I'm Laura. Oh, now that's rich. Little old Laurie's no bigger than a hiccup. Well, that was 20 years ago. The last time I was here, I opened the gate to the chicken coop and all the chickens went out. Do you remember? Well, where in the devil you been? You stay away from that chicken coop. You haven't changed much, Uncle Jasper. Changed? Why should I change? Sometimes you talk just as silly as your mother. Feather-headed women don't make no sense. But what if he sees you and turns the dog on you? Nobody's gonna see anything. I'll wait till him and the dog go in the mine. The only thing they're gonna see is a great big bomb fire. You darn fool, adipated female, you ain't got the sense you was born with. I shake a whole cup full of evidence right under your nose, and what do you give me? quarter of a million dollars, Uncle Jasper. Ah, oh, women. Why does a man have to be plagued all his life by bothering with women? I can't stand him. There, woman. What do you think that is? Gold? Shale. And what's under shale? Gold. Sludge, you ninny. You got to be really daft and not to know that where there's shale and sludge, you're very likely to find gold. Well, now, what's the matter with my partner? this thing? Oh, anything ain't worth shucks. I bought that back in 36 a year of the fire from a crooked salesman. He was crooked in a horse's hind leg, he was. I, I declare. Huh. Well, we whipped him again, partner. But they're playing dirtier and meaner all the time. Who? Who did this? Them same fellas that tore up my coop and upset my privy. Them Parsons Development people. Uh, they want to buy me out. Uh, 
think that they can slicker a fella out of his gold mine. <laughs> but not while Jasper McGillicuddy's alive. <laughs> no, sir. Right, partner? Parsons Development. I am talking, and you had better be listening. If you think your, your thugs, your arsonists, can intimidate my uncle into giving up his property, his gold mine, you'd better get your head on straight. You're not dealing with some backwoods rubby, you, you phony. Jasper McGillicuddy was a prospector long before you wore long pants. And he'll still be working his gold mine and fighting for it long after your Parsons building becomes a parking lot. Uh, yes, Susan. The crew chief wants to know if he can move his bulldozers onto the McGillicuddy property. Uh, later, Susan, later. Yeah, you better believe it's later, much later. Now let me give you fair warning, Mr. Almighty Dollar. Uncle Jasper now has help. And if you ever wondered what it was like to wrestle a grizzly bear, you just try tangling with a McGillicuddy and a Bailey. So that's what I think of your lousy quarter million dollars. Yes, sir? Find that moron Benson and get him out to my office right away. He's not in, Mr. Parsons. He said he's taking care of unfinished business. He said you'd understand. Now, tomorrow around lunchtime, when we're sitting in a restaurant, full of witnesses, whammo! The old geezer's mind goes all over two counties. <laughs> Will you hurry up with that thing? I am hurrying. It's not every day I build a barn, you know? Will you give me that thing? Contraption like that that's a friend of Jasper McGillicuddy's. Whew. Oh, confound it, Lori. Is that your foul smelling ram trap? It is. Uncle Jasper, you are a hermit. I need wheels. Oh, so you can go gallivanting all around the neighborhood, huh? For one thing, so I can drive to the village general store and pick up something to go with those rabbits. No, sir. There ain't no store bought food coming into my house. I've been growing and shooting my own food since... Uncle eight. Jasper, shush. Oh, it's shush, is it? Shush. Well, shush to the both of you. Yes, sir? Have we heard from Benson yet? Not a word. The oh, Lord knows what he's up to. Cancel my appointments for the rest of the day and send my car around. I better look into this McGillicuddy matter personally. Yes, sir, my boy. Sooner or later, you and me has got to have a long palaver on the subject of women. If you don't keep a sharp eye on them, or you know it, they're slipping the leash right around your neck. She's the spitting image of her mother. <laughs> now, Janie, there was a real nag. I remember back when we were kids. It was 1908. Now, there I go lying again. It couldn't have been a minute before 1912. <laughs> Yeah, I guess you're right. Come on, take it out.
need one thing, it's another. Partner! Partner! Hey, part! Part! <coughs> ah! Glory be, partner, I knew you'd be back. You're downright dependable, that's what you are. That's more than I can say about people. <laughs> You're darn right, it's heavy. It's a whole lot more than we can handle. All right, partner, you go for help, and I'll wait here for you. Susan, is the McGillicuddy turn off to the right or the left? I can't remember. Ah, oh, to the right, thanks. Oh, no, did I hit you? What the? Now, wait a minute, dog. Are you trying to tell me you want me to follow you? Why didn't you just say so? Well, now, Jasper, this is a fine fix, ain't it? Okay, dog, we've had the walk in the country. Now, give me the keys. Come on, give me the keys. Give me the keys. Come on. Hold on a minute, Pooch. I think I've been a real sport about this. But you think I'm gonna crawl into that hole with you? Come on, give me those keys. Uh, partner. Don't come in here. The whole dang mountain's about to sit on my head. <coughs> so there's somebody in there. All right. Come on. Give me a break, dog. Huh? This is a new bit for me. You never listen to a word I say, but glory be, you brought help. <coughs> oh, how are you? I'm just passing through here. Well, okay? Well, you're a damn fool, whoever you are, but uh, I love you just the same. Oh, all right. Move further, move further. I'm clear. Oh, that's it. I'm clear. Can you walk? Not a foot. But if you'll get going, you'll see the fastest sight crab crawl in the world. All right, I'll just go. Well, that's it. That's, that's it. That was easy enough. Come on. Easy now, old man. All right. Ah, that's it. Okay. Oh, come on. All right. Come on now. I'm coming. All right. Uh. All right. Whoa. I think we can make it. Yeah. <coughs> All right. Oh, that's a devil to replace it. Yeah. <coughs> Jasper, what happened? I don't rightly know, Lori. There was a whale of an explosion and my property fell on me head. <laughs> but thanks to my partner and his friend here. <laughs> you? Oh, how about that? And I thought I was lost. You're lower than I thought. What's next, murder? 
Rory, have you taken leave of the little sense you had? This man... <laughs> this man is Glenn Parsons. The devil himself? Laura, Mr. McGillicuddy, look, I, I wanted to... I beg your pardon, sir. First time in my long life I have nothing to say, so I'll say nothing for the moment. Oh, you brought my keys, did you? I think I'll find my own way home. Ralph Benson and that other idiot, uh, Cal something, I want them paid off. And if they're still in the city tomorrow morning, I want them arrested. Yes, Susan? Miss Bailey to see you, sir. Is she armed? Please, don't throw me out until I've apologized. Well, you'll have to wait your turn. I'm afraid I got a lot of apologizing to do myself. Where's your Uncle Jasper? I don't know. After he told me exactly what happened yesterday, he left. He didn't come back all night. I don't know where he went. I'll be making my own announcement, girlie. No one talks to me, not while Jasper McGillicuddy is alive. Mr. McGillicuddy, oh, I Oh, little want... laddie, I'll be doing the talking. You'll be doing the listening. Yesterday, you saved me life. Now, how I got into that fix doesn't matter, Beans, but I owe you. And Jaster McGillicuddy never owed nobody nothing. Now, you've been wanting me property for a long time. Well, there it is, you got it. Now, I'll be thanking you to shut your face until I've taken me leave. But, um... I, I, I... Yes? The foreman is on the line. He wants to know if he can put his bulldozers to work on the McGillicuddy place. Not while Jasper McGillicuddy's alive. You're all a bunch of thumbs, that's what you're, you're supposed to. You're going to rebuild this and not tear it down. That's all you're doing. It's torn. All Doesn't he ever down. stop? Down there. <laughs> it was really nice of you to help rebuild Uncle Jasper's mind. Well, it's the least I can do under the circumstances. No! Stay out the way! There's a voice that keeps on calling me Down the road, that's where I'll always be Every stop I make I make a new friend Can't stay for long Just turn around and I'm gone again Maybe tomorrow I'll want to settle down Until tomorrow I'll just keep moving on Until tomorrow The whole world is my home